Next on BYUSN, 7 and 5. If you were guaranteed a 7 and 5 year next year in the Big 12, would you take it right now? Plus, what do we like so far from Mark Pope's young team? And what improvements are still to come from this young basketball team? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfit of BYU fans everywhere. On the second day of December, I'm Dave McCann with Blaine Fowler. We are uh, we're running the show today. Things are going to be a little bit different, I'm sure. We haven't been together like this since uh, like December 23rd, 2014, the day after the Miami Beach brawl. They brought us in to try and make sense of it all. Well, we didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, brought, been back. they brought the two old guys in to to speak about uh, how people need to grow up, right? Is that what yeah, it was? I think it <laughs> Is that was. what it was? It's either that we either, they're afraid that we will raise the bar, you know, this high, or that we will drop the bar this low. That's <laughs> what's really hanging in the back. What's crazy is, is you and I have done, um, I, I, would I be exaggerating if I said we've been together on shows for BYU TV and, and the app and all of that, more than a thousand times together, yeah, at least, yeah, right? Yeah. Over what, 32 years? Yeah, so more than a thousand shows. It's crazy because we're so young. Yeah, more, exactly. More than a thousand <laughs> shows we've done together, but I think we've only done this show together one time. Yeah. We've done this show a bunch with, with Jeremy and Spencer and with Shep and you name it. So between the two of us, we've done it a lot, but together one time. And it was the day after the Miami Beach brawl. It's like, so. uh, it's like two of the Beatles getting back together for one <laughs> exactly. show only. Exactly. That show so. is right now. we got a big show today. Yeah, so for today, we, we've got our expectations for BYU football next year. Talk about that a little bit. Schedule, what can they do? Uh, Greg LaBelle is going to join us and talk football and basketball with us. We've got South Dakota looming tomorrow for the BYU basketball team. And Jamal Williams with the ultimate Christmas gift. We're going to talk <laughs> about that. Do you think we're on his list? Will something be coming? I want one, and we're going to talk, talk about it. It in a bit. All right, let's begin with the headlines on this Friday. We love Fridays. Blake Freeland, named to the Pro Football Focus All-American third team. The offensive lineman is BYU's third lineman in as many seasons to be named an All-American. He is one big dude. We wonder if he'll come back. Yeah, and I mean, he, he looks like an NFL guy, looks the part, certainly would have an opportunity. Hey, why don't we talk about Cougars in the NFL that are already there? Tyler Algier and the Falcons take on the Steelers. Jamal Williams and the Lions host the Jags this week. Zach Wilson, well, maybe not going to be starting, but Zach Wilson's still with the Jets. They travel to face Kyrus Tonga and the Vikings. At least they can get a picture together after. That's exactly right. Dax Milne and the Commanders face the Giants. Both Michael Davis and Kyle Van Noy together with the Chargers. They're on the road in Vegas to play the Raiders. Cleveland Browns with Sione Takitaki travel to Houston for a date with the Texans. And then Fred Warner, in my opinion, the best linebacker in the National Football League in the Niners, will take on the Dolphins at home in San Francisco this weekend. So lots of Cougs in action and uh, representing really well. It's interesting. BYU doesn't have like the sheer numbers of NFL guys, but the ones that they do have are big time contributors and doing great things. Taysom Hill and Danny Sorensen, they got a bye this week. Men's basketball, they're going to try to make it three wins in a row. They're at Vivint Arena tomorrow against South Dakota. We'll be there as well. Tip time's 3.30 Eastern live on BYU TV. Our coverage starts at 2.30 Eastern with BYU Sports Nation game day with Jeremy and Tyler, and then we'll have the call up there. The Cougars play well up there, looking for their 18th straight win at Vivint Arena. The guys keep telling us it's a shooter's gym. How about women's basketball? Great road win. They beat Boise State on the road last night, 76-67. Lauren Gustin had 24 points and 17 boards. She's recorded a double-double in all eight games this season, which is tied for the NCAA lead. We're going to talk about that a little bit more because that's quite an accomplishment, and she is on a terror right now. So congrats to Lauren Gustin and also the women's uh, basketball team for that nice road win at Boise State. It's tournament time for the volleyball team. The women's volleyball squad are on the East Coast, taking on James Madison. First round, four Eastern in Pittsburgh. If they win today, and we expect they will, uh, they'll likely get a rematch with Pitt tomorrow. Pitt came here in early September and beat them at the Smith Fieldhouse. The Cougs would love another shot. There you go. Got to take care of business first. Hey, at BYU gets three major WCC postseason cross-country awards. Casey Klingler and Aubrey Friendway take the men's and women's runner of the year. And Dilji Taylor is the women's coach of the year. Isn't she every year? Fantastic. An amazing job. And, and BYU sweeps those awards every year, it seems like, as well. Uh, BYU's distance runners compete tomorrow in the Sharon Collier Danville track season opener. The running is set to start at 9.05 Eastern tomorrow. That's in Boston. Congrats to Mike Weir. has been named the captain 
captain of the international team for the 2024 President's Cup. First time a BYU alum's had such an honor. He won the Masters back in 2002. And, uh, and now he's going to try to be in charge of taking down the entire United States. Pr pretty cool. And it's a, it's a huge honor. And we all call him Weirzy, right? Yeah. If you're a BYU guy, you call him Weirzy. <laughs> so, hey, swim and dive. Uh, continue to compete in the Toyota Open in Greensboro, North Carolina today. They'll be in action there tomorrow as well. So today and tomorrow, Cody Dreesen and Haley Johnson have moved on to the zones in diving. All right. All rise and shout. It is time for What's Trending. We're still waiting on the Big 12 schedule. Right. Uh, we we thought, thought we'd have we it thought yesterday. We thought we'd have it Thursday, and then the league told us it's going to be a couple more weeks. So I don't know if that means the end of next week or, or the week following. But So the wait continues. But we were thinking, BYU 7-5, and five, a lot of people are disappointed about that. Thought it would be a much better year. You and I thought they'd be much better. Uh, but 7-5 and five next year, if we were sitting here one year ahead, would you take 7-5, and five, like lock it down today if you were guaranteed 7-5 and five next year? Well, I like to see the games played, but if I would be happy with seven and five next year, as I've looked at who's in the league, and, and Tom Homo, when you sat down with Tom, said uh, he knows who BYU plays next season. So he, he knows who's home and who's on the road. He just doesn't know in what order yet, and we know the preseason schedule. Um, I, I would actually be okay with a seven-win season in a bowl game next year as they transition in. Well, think about it. It would mean you'd, you win the first two games, Sam Houston and Southern Utah. Then you're playing 10 straight P5s, including Arkansas. Right. On the 16th. At Arkansas. At Arkansas. But you know what? Liberty went and beat Arkansas there. BYU. True. If they have their head on, they should be able to go in there and contend for that game. But they got to win five of those 10. Which five do you think they'll win? The, the, this is the hard part. So, so as we were getting ready for the show, I started to think through if, if I put a schedule together in my mind and I put one together, maybe these guys home, these guys away yeah. with those three preseason, and I started to go down and make check marks where I'm like, this is an obvious win. And I only made two check marks. <laughs> That's not good, right? Now so you know you're going to get at least so four home games. I say Sam Houston and Southern Utah are guaranteed wins, okay, right? So give me five more. And, and, then, and then, like, here's my mock schedule. Arkansas on the road is not mock. We know that, right? right. That's not an automatic win, no. right? So I'm saying home. This is wishful, right? Oklahoma, Kansas, Houston, and Oklahoma State. Both Oklahoma schools at home, okay? I'm so saying, if those are the four home games, how many of those four do they win? Okay, I don't know that I could put a, a check mark on any. I'd say Kansas, possibly, but they, they've been really good this yeah. year. Houston, BYU's beaten before. But, but where I just go, no, that's an automatic win. Not one. Yeah, there's no automatic. Not one. So here's who I'm saying away. At Iowa State, at Kansas State, at Cincinnati, at Baylor. What? <laughs> and they're, and, so and the, pick five wins out of those you just ruled yeah, off. I, not one single one of those is an automatic check mark. And then the teams I don't have them playing this year, um, I don't have them at Texas, Texas Tech, Central Florida, Cincinnati, or, or, or West Virginia. No, I had them in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, in Cincinnati. And, I, and, and, and I, I just did four away and, and, and and, and four on the road. I actually, you actually have to come up with one more game out of that group to either play at home or away. So let's say I would take, let's say Iowa State, Cincinnati. They got a new coach. Okay. Uh, Houston. Okay. Here. Uh, you got them to five now because you already said Sam Houston and Southern Utah. Right. Uh, one of the not Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State or or uh, Oklahoma. If you have them here at home. You get one, one of those? those? One of those in one of those so great you, spectacular nights. So you've got them to six now. To six. Now they got to go find another one. Kansas State's playing in the Big 12 championship tomorrow, so right. they're not they're not uh, they're not at the bottom. I I'm not sure I'm not sure where you can find it. Yeah, and and like I said, I I put together 11 because I said, well, let, let's say four home, four away, and then I, we don't know if BYU is going to play five league games at home or five league games on the road. So one of those other teams we'd have to plug in there too, and. I, if you say if you take Texas, Texas Tech, Central Florida, West Virginia, are any of those just automatic wins? No automatics. But you you'd like to think that BYU can can defend its home field. 
Lavelle Edwards Stadium is just different enough from all the other ones. It's yep. a tough place to come in and play and win. So not everyone's going to bring their A game. So let's let's program. say that Central Florida pops on and it's a home and BYU plays seven. Yeah, I think we beat. Central I, Florida. I think they beat Central Florida at home. So I would say Sam Houston, Southern Utah, one of the Oklahomas, Kansas, Houston, Central Florida, and then on the on the road, you know maybe they get Cincinnati um, or Baylor or Baylor like. So we're, that's why when you say, would you just take seven and five? I would take seven and five. I go, this is a whole different deal. <laughs> and are BYU fans ready for this much of a different deal? Now, if Jaron Hall comes back and Puka Nakua comes back, which is doubtful on right. both, right? Mm -hmm. But if both of those guys came back, I might be a little more bullish. I, I, might, I might say, hey, you know what? We'll defend the home it, it's, not a re, it's not a reload year. It's, it's a year where all the talent's coming back, especially at quarterback, and I think that that's huge. When you got a returning starter at quarterback, I think that's typically good for a couple of wins, right? That's why we were so disappointed this year, yeah. that, that the way they started. But, but remember, they had a four-game streak where Jaron Hall was injured, right? right? And with Jaron Hall out, they, I b believe with 100% healthy Jaron Hall, the entire season – that BYU doesn't lose those four games. I think they lose two of them. Um, and, and I think they get Notre Dame right. with 100%. And they health. get East Carolina. And they, and they get East Carolina. And, and I mean, even Arkansas would have been a different a, di a different game. So, so that's why I put so much value. And that's why everybody's so disappointed until you really think about that. Now, Jaron's never used that as an excuse. Kalani's never used that as an excuse. But we watched the, that he wasn't quite the same. And it's the most imp important position in football. Yeah, the throws it, weren't it, the same. Is a, is a quarterback position, especially at BYU with the offense that they yeah. run. And so if BYU had Jaron Hall coming back next year, then I, I'd probably go, I'd feel way more comfortable saying eight or nine, right? What if you were coming back? How many? If I was coming back, we would win ten. <laughs> Here's the, because we'd be playing in the whack yeah, if it was me. Here's know? the greater question. Um, is Cougar Nation, and you and I have been out and about in Cougar Nation mm. for 30-some years, is Cougar Nation ready to have a bumpy road? And, and you know what? A lot of those could be uh, all of a sudden four and, uh, four and eight, three and nine. Yeah, um, I, I feel like what the bar has got to be different, right? So... So, and BYU should be in a position when they get in the league with the resources and now they're recruiting as a P5, that after this first couple of years, they should be able to recruit in, in a fashion that allows them to have what I would call reloading years and then veteran years, right? On veteran years, the expectation should be eight or nine wins, right? On, when they have veterans coming back at the key positions. Um, on years when they're reloading, and I don't know the BYU should ever be in rebuild, reloading, I think bowl eligibility is the goal on a reloading year, which yeah. means six wins, right? So six or seven on the reloading years, eight or nine on veteran years, and then one once in a while. Magic happens. Like, so TCU is a perfect example of that this year. This is all of the stars coming into alignment, all the veterans at all the key positions, some really amazing young talent that's been plugged in. They're, they're, they move the ball on anybody in the country, and here they are in a college football playoff, right, if they win, if they, if they win in that Big 12 championship game, which I expect them to do. But that's not TCU every year. No, nor has it been like any, like any year. No. I mean, they were the, good the back only, in the, the day, but that's when uh, yeah. Mountain West wasn't considered legit. So those years are every once in a while, and those yeah. are magical seasons when you're in a league like this. Um, so that's what I'm preparing my mind for. The question that you ask is, are BYU fans prepared for that? I don't know if they are. I, I, hope, I hope that they understand the opportunity to see um, this list of teams that we just talked through coming through here for home games every single, like every game's going to matter. Every game's going to be a big game in the league. Um, as long as we're not on the Kansas plan. You know, it took them like 80 years no, 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 to field no, no. a team this year. And, then their quarterback got hurt and then... Yep. And I don't, think, I, I don't think that BYU has to go the, the Kansas route. Nor do I think they need to go the Utah route in, in the Pac-12. Utah went right from um, the Mountain West Conference into the Pac-12. I feel like this transition for BYU from the Mountain West Conference to Independence, where they're playing schedules that aren't quite Big 12 schedules, but close. You know, years where they've played seven P5s and six P5s. And in the last couple of years, they've done much better uh, against that type of competition. Has better prepared BYU 
to maybe have a couple of a year transition and not take quite as long as now Utah now is in the last four or five years they've been the best team in the big in the in the Pac-12. Right. They've been the most consistent best team. I think USC is the best team in that league right now, and I think UCLA is right there now too, and Oregon's right back again. But there was a period of time where Utah was the best team, but it took Utah a long time to get to that point. This is why it's important that uh, Tennessee paid two million bucks to get off of BYU. Yeah, schedule. who would you want them instead Moving of Southern Utah? Forward, they've got to have. We'll yeah. call them cupcakes. You have to have two cupcakes. And maybe a third, or a third will be a P5. Maybe Utah, and they're not a cupcake, but that's a good game uh, that's winnable. But then you look at the gauntlet, and you go, we have to be no worse than 2-1 and one by the fourth week of September, or we're in big trouble. Yeah, and, and I think every year you try to schedule three wins in, in that preseason, unless there's a game of national interest, like, like a Utah game or an opportunity to play a a Florida or somebody like that, an SEC team or something like that, that's a big game. Then you take that game on a particular year, and you hope that you take that game because those are sometimes short notice. Hey, do you want to come play in the kickoff classic yeah. next year? And you know you've got your quarterback coming back and you're stacked, and you go, yeah, we want that We want that game this year. So so you got to schedule three wins if you possibly can. Um, and, and people wonder why the SEC does that. Well, this is why. This is why. This is why. So Very interesting. So let's hear from you, the voice of the nation. Our question of the day is this. If you could guarantee a 7-5 and five record for BYU in their first year of the Big 12, which is next year, would you take it? Nick Lee 51 on Twitter, yes, with it being the most P5 teams BYU's ever faced, while possibly breaking a new quarterback and a new defense, 7-5 and five would be a huge accomplishment. Plus, being 7-5 and five of the Big 12 means you still get a quality bowl versus a fellow P5 opponent like the Texas Bowl against the SEC, for example. Nick, you're spot on. I like that. I, li I, I like that he brings in the bowl aspect of it that... Hey, the fifth place team in the Big 12 gets a better bowl than BYU typically has been getting. That's at, a great point. At DVG63 on Twitter, though, I said his his response is, "Nah, I'd rather take a chance at being exceptional than accept mediocrity." I'll throw in mediocre. Yeah, oh, he, yeah that's that's exactly yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, that's that's it's going to be seven and so, five might just be sensational. Yeah, it might be a great it might be a great year. So, well. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> so. All right, jump on there, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, hashtag BYUSN. Let you know some of your thoughts, and we'll dance around them throughout Absolutely. the show. Hey, BYU basketball is back tomorrow um, as they play South Dakota at Vivint Arena. Watch the game on BYU TV or the BYU TV app. Coverage begins 2.30 Eastern with Jerem Jordan and Tyler Hawes hosting BYU Sports Nation game day. And then Dave and I will be on the call at 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain. Greg Rubel will be on the call on the radio and look the other person who's been here as long as us also not with the day off today there he is Greg Rubel joins us live we'll talk football and basketball bowl games and much more coming up this is our Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Now I'm living in paradise. Merry Christmas, baby. You sure been good to me. Merry Christmas, everybody. All the way home, I'll be warm. It's Christmas every day. 
of the year. We are live in Studio B, BYU Sports Nation. Good to have you with us. Blaine Fowler, Dave McCann. Happy to have Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars, in with us. Let's just jump to the hard questions. <laughs> yes, Our question, exactly. <laughs> a moment ago, we asked Cougar Nation, if you could be guaranteed 7-5 and five, next year at this time after a season in the Big 12, would you take it right now if you could? Well... S you always want to have loftier aspirations, right? So you're right. saying you're, you're, you're taking not, that off the table. This isn't about aspirations. This is about <laughs> reality. Uh, I, I'd love to be better, but if that were the low bar, yeah. But think about getting to seven wins as we are breaking we, we just, uh, A winning we, record in the Big 12? Is big, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you look at the, at the conference right now, there are, I think, I think, six teams within five and seven or seven and five. A six-team logjam in that in that two-game window, um, and there are eight teams between four and eight and eight and four. There's a lot of compression there, and so to be above 500 with that kind of competition would be outstanding. Yeah, we we were we kind of put a mock schedule together. I just threw something together. I said, hey, what if they? We know the first three games. What if they play these five teams at home or these four teams at home, and then these four or these five on the road? And our our goal was put a check mark by the automatic wins. We only found three check marks. Yeah. And, and so then the rest are kind of, there's a bunch there in the middle of that, hey, that could go either way. And then there's some that, boy, that's going to be tough, especially if you don't have uh, Jaron Hall back. Oh, and, if and you're we, going with a new quarterback yeah. starting from scratch. Yeah. So if, if let, yeah. let's assume you're starting from scratch with quarterback and Jaron goes. And now we'll just make that assumption. We don't know that yet. But but if he does, then is 7-5 a little bit better in your mind? Oh, that would be beyond outstanding if you're doing it with somebody that's brand new to the program at that point. Uh, projections are so hard. Baylor, would they finish up 6-6? Six and six? I'm not sure that when BYU played Baylor, even after, even after Baylor lost to BYU, that, 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 that we thought 6-6 six and six would be their season. That's where they are. That's a good football program. Uh, yeah, they're making, defending champion. And they're making coaching changes uh, right. at 6-6. At, at, at six and six. Um, There's a lot of, in fact, on that note, uh, BYU was a rare team that didn't have a coaching change. Uh, we, we had this out last week on social media, but BYU and Stanford were two of only five programs not to have any coaching changes. Yeah, five out of 130-plus teams that don't have a change, so you're very much an outlier. So what's happening right now in the Big 12 and elsewhere is very much par for the course. Um, it kind of took me off topic, but the, the point is, Baylor at 6-6, six and six, they've got to make some changes. Are you so emotionally prepared for a rocky road, and is Cougar Nation prepared for a rocky road. The whack was tough in the beginning, but BYU dominated it. The Mountain West was challenging toward the end after BYU dominated mm -hmm. it. Independence was all over the place, but here comes. I, I think it does require a shift in mindset because um, you're going to go from from contending for fewer conference championships, but perhaps being in contention for mo more postseason opportunities. Uh, and whether that's better bowls in football's uh, standpoint or in the other sports, is getting to the NCAA tournament. Because as we know, in the Big 12, middle of the pack or lower gets you to the NCAA seed, tournament. Yeah. Whereas in the WCC, you've got to be top two or maybe three at best. So I think, it, you know, that has to be the shift is we, BYU may not win as many titles, but may be contending for more postseason opportunities because of the depth of the Big 12. We, we, we want to talk about basketball a little bit. Let's... But I want to ask you one more football question. You mentioned that Stanford and BYU were the only two teams that didn't have a... Two a, of five. Two of five nice that, that yeah, didn't yeah. have. Um, and now we know there are already coaching changes. Right. We know that Lisa, uh, Lisa right. tu, uh, Tuyaki is moving on, and then David Shaw has announced that he's stepping down, so a whole right. regime change over, over at Stanford. Um, th there could be some others on BYU staff. Does the do coaching changes, their defensive coordinator for BYU, um, impact your view on how BYU performs next year? What, what kind of impact is that going to have, coaching changes on the defensive side of the ball? Well, I, I, I mean, when things are going well, it's okay to kind of keep the gang together, I guess you'd say. But, but, but transition and turnover 
in coaching staffs, that is the norm, not the uh, not, 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 not the exception. So BYU be in the club with everyone else if they're making these kind of changes. I think a fresh approach is always going to be welcome, especially if you feel like you didn't maximize your potential. And there's no doubt that when BYU went through that four-game skid this year, they felt they weren't maximizing their potential. And so I guess at that point, you could argue that you know some kind of refreshment was needed um, with this program. Uh, I think the bowl game is big, though, not necessarily for affecting how many changes are made, but for how this team goes into the Big 12. Uh, a four-game win streak to end the year and an 8-5 and five season, it just feels a little better than, than, than what they're currently at if they were to, say, lose their bowl game. I, I think that the last year's bowl game kind of left a sour taste. I think everyone kind of reflected back on that and says that was a poor representation of BYU at that point. And so less about what BYU um, expects to get from its postseason should be more about what BYU can give in this postseason. Uh, I, bet, I, I think they would agree to a man that, that the effort wasn't what it should have been last year. Um, and it was a rough situation uh, with the weather and everything else. But that said, um, they didn't represent the way they wanted to. Be an interesting couple weeks ahead. Tomorrow we'll all be at uh, Vivint Arena for basketball with South Dakota. And speaking, you used the word refresh a moment ago. Uh, Mark Pope had to refresh his roster significantly. Yeah. Uh, and now some of these young guns like Jackson Robinson, um, and, uh, and the return missionaries that have come in, and Noah Waterman, they're starting to hit their shots. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's some potential here. And yet, let, let's, let's pause for a moment and think where BYU, if you, thought, if you said BYU is going, to the, going into this season with all the novelty they had, but wouldn't have Trevin Nell or Spencer Johnson on top of that, Wow. And that's where they are right now. Now, granted, uh, Spencer is more of a short-term injury. The hope is uh, Trevin's recovering from a longer-term situation. But to be where they are right now uh, with some positivity, despite the fact they're without two of their you know, guard line anchors, if you will, they expected to have at this point. So it did offer more minutes for Jackson Robinson to start and play early, and now for Richie and Dallin to get in and play a lot more meaningful minutes. And so, um, you know, not, not necessarily blessing in disguise, not having Trevin or now Spencer, but the minutes were there, and the guys who have filled them have given us, I think, a pretty promising glimpse into the future. What, this is Mark Pope's first return missionary class. Um, he's now getting his guys. Right, so yeah. his yeah. guys they recruited that went off. You know, he's, he's had some of his guys, but have come right in and play. But this is the first group, this three especially, mm -hmm. that went out on, he recruited, went out on missions, came back, and now are starting to contribute. What's your um, evaluation of them so far, early? Uh, we, we saw our first glimpse of Tanner Tools the other night, and, that, and that's in a non-Division one game. But what Richie and Dallin have given BYU so far, Dallin's now hitting his threes. Took a while for him to get his first one, right. but now he's hitting those. Um, I, I think, you know, if, if you were to say that, um, that Dallin has the inside track to be your point guard taking you into the Big 12, you'd feel comfortable with that. And, and Richie Saunders has proven a versatility and a tenacity and a length and a range of abilities that makes you really optimistic about where this thing is going. Um, they'll need more pieces uh, in the season to come. Um, and, and Coach has already proven very uh, willing to explore the portal for whoever will come to BYU that is a good fit. And that's an exciting part about it, too. There are some players who will contribute next year that we don't know at this point who they're going to be. But yet the ones we do identify, we can feel really good about. And Jackson Robinson, too, I think is, he's, not, he's not a freshman coming in, but um, came in as a starter right away and is really looking good. Again, there's a smoothness about him and understatedness about his game that is just so cool. Mark Pope had told us in our in our pregame prep meetings that uh, that Waterman he thinks is a year away from being sensational. Uh, he's hitting over 50 percent of his threes. He's big and tall, and mm -hmm. and you can tell he's you know he's still adjusting to life with the big boys. But great potential out on the wing for a big guy. Yeah, and 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 coach wants from Noah and some others just you know to guard a little better, uh, a little more, a little more consistently, and that's team wide. And BYU should find itself in pretty decent shape. I think it's going to be an interesting and competitive WCC season this year too. There have been enough WCC teams that have already pulled off impressive wins in the non-conference campaign. I look forward to what's to come. And then when you talk about going frying pan to fire with the, with the Big 12 next oh, year, man. oh my yeah. gosh, that, that, that's uh, what I wanted to talk about next. It's yeah, like we, I, we keep talking about hey. It's seven okay for football and everybody's going no they've got to be better than that and I look at basketball and go oh my goodness are fans ready for that league yeah, are we I think, ready for I think that six league? or seven of the ten teams right now are at one or zero losses and they're playing good games um, it's 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 going to be something we've never seen before <laughs> I, I think there will be some teams that come to the Marriott Center who would ne otherwise never ever come here right? right they would never come and unless, unless being required to as they will be and there will be some teams who take L's I think in the Marriott Center just because of the venue and because of the atmosphere and and if it's a tight game the Marriott Center will help BYU win 
I, I think, a handful of those tight games every year. I think under the radar was uh, what Texas did to Gonzaga. Yeah. Left. Just destroyed them. Yeah. And Gonzaga is the creme de la creme of the WCC. Yeah. Uh, and I'm paying and a lot more attention to the Big 12 these days. And yeah. The Big 12 Big East Challenge is going on right, right. now. Some nice wins there as well. Uh, it's just going to be uh, a, a total eye-opener. The venues, uh, the crowds, the vibes, it, it's, it's almost a total 180 from the WCC. You get it in a building or two, uh, granted, at a smaller scale. And now you're going to get it pretty much everywhere you go at a massive scale. It's going to be so fun to have those yeah. teams just rotate through here yeah. that are required in league yeah. play to come here every year. We're going to see Kansas and, and you know great, great teams, teams that have been in Final Fours, teams that have won national championships. That's that's going to be fun. Yeah. Th this team, you mentioned, they'll have some new faces even next year because Mark's going right. to look to the transfer portal. Um, this group that's here right now, though, um, where have you seen them grow the most? And, and then what are you looking most forward to as this season progresses with this group? Well, you know, when Coach Pope came in four seasons ago, offensive rebounding was way down the to-do list in terms of things they really focused on. And if you look at his record from year one, two, three, and four, that offensive rebound percentage has gone up every year, incrementally or exponentially, it might feel like right now. They're a really good offensive rebounding, a really good rebounding team overall. They play fast. And, and while the turnover trouble, the turnover number is coming down, let's say where they've improved, the turnover number is coming down. Four straight games, it's come down. The percentage is dropping, which is good. Uh, but they're playing fast, and yet they're playing still pretty efficiently. Again, there's only, I, I tweeted this out the other day. There were one of the only 11 teams that were sitting in the top 70 in, in tempo, offensive, and defensive efficiency. It's hard to be all three, to be fast and to be efficient on both ends of the floor. But BYU is that team right now. Again, the numbers aren't going to blow you away. They're in the, you know, the 40s and the 60s. But just to be in that grouping of top 70, it's hard to be good in all three. And BYU is right now. And it's a very low number of teams that are doing all those three things. So I would say improvement in, um, in taking better care of the ball while still being efficient. Uh, and I think more of a macro is team tenacity and resiliency. They're never really out of a game. They've been out and gotten back in. Right. Uh, they don't lose big. They haven't yet, at least. They don't lose big, haven't lost big. They kind of stay right there. Where they have to get better, uh, the free throw number has got to come up. Yeah. We're an interesting uh, trend of games because the Dayton, Dayton's a good team. That was a big second half in overtime. Yeah. Uh, Westminster's that. Uh, South Dakota's going to be a little better in Westminster. Yeah. Utah Valley a little bit better maybe than South Dakota. And then number seven, Creighton a week from Saturday down in Vegas. And then on the other side Bay. of that, you got a Utah team that just destroyed Arizona last yeah, night. Yeah, unbelievable. Like, destroy, like, Arizona's never in the game. Yeah. They got within five or six maybe at one point, but it was a wire-to-wire -wire win for Utah. So, yeah, this November, December schedule with a relatively new team in terms of players coming together, it's as tough, and it, it really it's as good um, a, a maybe – preview platform for what Coach Pope is going to have himself dealing with in terms of the Big 12, in terms of rigors, game to game. He really challenged himself this year with this year's team. And there have been a couple of nice wins, there are probably some more to come, but the challenges have been uh, really stout. I'm really impressed by what he's done to challenge his team. Yeah, it's, been, it's been fun with yeah. this new team. Thank yeah. you for uh, classing we, up the show. We, we, hey, no. it's all the, they brought the vets in <laughs> today. Old-timers it's day. all the veterans. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> what, hey, watch, watch and listen to all of us tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll all be there together. We'll all be in the... You'll be down low. I'll be up high. Well, well, I'll be I'm in jealous of yeah. your view. You, but you may have more room. <laughs> because we're, we're not gonna crack when we get in, I have to way. climb over three people's heads to get into where we do the game. But we'll all be there tomorrow, so make sure you, you tune in. Listen to Greg. Watch us tomorrow with yeah. that South Dakota game. We're, we're looking forward to that. Also, watch this week's AFR or any other BYU TV sports content, including games on demand. You just go to the BYUSN.com or the BYU TV app. We all have the BYU TV app on our phone and use it there. It's easy to do, and you can pick up anything. You can watch this show again if you want to. Good to have the, the, the three older guys in. It feels like we should go to Golden Corral. For <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, Jamal's Christmas gifts and the Cheez It Room. Have you seen that? You saw that picture. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I've seen it. Have you seen it? That. Oh, man. BYU the Sports Cheez -It Nation room. continues after this on a great Friday here. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics.
We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. I can just tell how special you guys are. And how much you love each other mm -hmm. and care about creating these happy memories together. For love is always with you, and love is stronger than death. God's heart isn't out to get us. It's out to draw us near. These jars are proof that the magic of Christmas is real. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and I guess even TikTok now. TikTok. We're into the big time. We're, so we're everywhere. Whatever social media you use, we're there. Um, and follow all of all, all of BYU Sports Nation content there. Blaine Fowler, uh, Dave McCann, uh, and the great uh, band Devo, uh, as they sing, let's whip it, let's shall whip we? It. The Cougar Whip Arounds presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Okay, all right, let's, let's get after let, it. Let's start with this. <laughs> what sporting event are you most looking forward to tomorrow? The U.S. World Cup match, which is early, right? College football conference championship games going all day long. Or the men's basketball game against South Dakota and Vivint Smart. I'm looking forward to the South Dakota game, of course, because that's where we get that's your number one? together. I like that, and that's fun, and we get paid to do it. So that's right there up the top. It's always better if we get paid. The World Cup, it's the <laughs> knockout rounds, and so, but that one's early. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, but that's super early, and, and there is some great... Yeah, I'm most interested in the game tonight as far as these conference you, championships. Utah and go. USC games. Tonight. Because some of the others are like, you know, LSU lost going in, Kansas State and TCU. I'm not, I'm not all excited about that. Um, but tonight's is pretty big. So uh, on the World Cup, we should mention, so, so we were taping after further review the other day to, to get ready for that show. And we had to tape it because we had a basketball game live that night and they were going to go back to back. Yeah. And... We were all very distracted because the World Cup, the U.S. was playing in the World Cup, and it was going into extra time. There were nine minutes of extra time. Finally, our our director Russ Merrill said, "Okay, you guys want me to just put it on the screen and take a pause for a minute?" Because he couldn't get our attention. So we had it on this. We put it on screen. every screen in this studio, and we watched the the so end. We were of analyzing that. football, watching football. We were watching, and we went back and we finished the show, but but. I have a great interest in, 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 in so the World Cup. So they're playing the Netherlands so. tomorrow. We wish them the best of luck. But speaking of tonight's game. Yes. Uh, and tomorrow night, for that matter. Are you a bigger TCU or a USC fan this weekend? Oh, I, I know your answer. I, I am a big TCU fan because I want the Big 12 to be represented. This is BYU's league. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I got to, we got to start rooting for the allegiance that we're tied, you know, the league that we're tied to. We have to be aligned to them. So I'm, I'm a big TCU fan because TCU is squarely in the college football playoff if, if they win. So I'm a huge, I'm a huge TCU fan. Um, USC and Utah tonight. Ah, uh, I, I think, I think USC is going to, it gets weird if, if Utah wins. It gets weird if Utah wins because I'm not sure that Utah goes to the Rose Bowl if they win. Right, I think Washington does. Or USC might go if they win. I'm all in Utah on the wins. Trojans tonight. You're all in on the Trojans. You know, okay. they run an exciting offense. Uh, and they're not playing up at Rice Eccles. It's not cold. It's in Vegas. I wouldn't be surprised if the Utes win. Yeah. But they're uh, tough. I'm all Trojans. All tonight. right. I'm big game boomer. Um, they listed the top 50 receivers for the 2022 season. Uh, and they, they go with this list. And notably, Puka is not on that list. Um, is this a gross oversight? Uh, yeah, it is um, until you get to the stats. Because he's been out. He's missed some games. His stats aren't off the charts, especially nationally. When you watch him, 
you go, is there a better receiver? Are there some really good ones? Is there a better receiver than Puka Nakua if you need a ball at the, in the corner of the end zone to be caught? We've seen him make some great plays. Certainly he'd be in the top 50. I'm not going to say he's the best, but he'd be in the top 50 of playmakers in college football. But if you're breaking down receivers from the season, uh, that's why you should come back next year. Ah, it's a good point. He needs a little more. Good point. If these I, I are think, 50 guys that might get taken ahead of him, what's his future? I think he's a top 20 receiver, but the stats the stats don't support it. So. Lauren Gustin recorded her eighth straight double-double in the win last night against Boise State. Will she break the BYU record for double-doubles this year? Ten straight is the BYU record. Kreshmer Chosich and Brett Applegate share that. Okay, so single-season double-double record um, is 22. And the NCAA single season record is 31. Um, and so I. She's getting the. Yeah, she's getting a nine because Utah State isn't going to rocks her out. So, so they've got Utah State. So they're at Utah State. Then, then they have they Utah, Utah at home, that which is a tough, tough matchup. And then they go on the road to Gonzaga. That's the next three games. So she would need to. To get 11 straight to break the single season record, she'd have to get that at Gonzaga, meaning she gets a double double at Utah State, Utah, and Gonzaga. I'm going to say she does it. I'm going to say she does that. Five straight was the best she ever had entering the season. She had 14 double doubles last season. I say she's going to be 20 plus double doubles and she's going to get the record. We wish her the best. So is today's women's volleyball NCAA opener against James Madison a trap game for BYU? Is the tournament ever a trap game? Well, and and the reason I ask this is because you already mentioned it earlier in the show. If they win, they get a big time matchup rematch with Pitt, who beat them on their home floor. And beat them last yes. year. Back yeah, there. Yeah, so this is is this a trap game because Pitt looms as the next um, game? Um I hope not. Uh, this is a young BYU team, so it shouldn't be a trap game because you lose, you go home. Um, if it was a veteran team, then it would be like, we just want Pitt. We're going back there to beat Pitt. Uh, I'd like to think no. I, I think they come out focused against James Madison. And then if Pitt is focused enough to beat Colgate, they can meet tomorrow. And then who wins that one? Uh, that's going to be tough. Oh, that's It'll be tough one. to beat tomorrow. All right. All right, would you pay for a robe that had Jamal Williams' face <laughs> all over it? Here's what he did. He gifted his teammates with the Lions. Uh, everyone got a robe, and if you look closer, Jamal is all over the robe. Um, he gave him to coaching staff too, right? He said, I thought this was what you're supposed to do as a vet. This is what I learned, he said. Aaron Rodgers would gift the team with Ugg boots in Green Bay. He's gone with a robe with his face on. So would I pay for that? <laughs> Let, let, let me just say this. If Jamal would give me one of those, I would wear it. You'd wear it? I would wear it probably. Parties. I don't know that I would pay for it at this point. So, because it's not something I would wear all the time. I would wear it on this show. So, it's a, it's a warm gesture. Nice job, Jamal. <laughs> all right. The Cheez It Bowl is going to have, by the way, Cheez It Bowl is tied to the Big 12. So, the Cheez It Bowl is going to have four players sleep in this Cheez It themed <laughs> room on Bowl Week. Would you be able to sleep in a room like this? Here's how we're going to tell which players slept in that room on Bow Week. During the game, if they run the opposite direction of their team, they will have lost their mind because they slept in this the night before. Uh, you, you know I don't sleep well anyhow. But at colorblind, you might be all right in there. No, yellow I can see. Yellow is one of the colors. I'm, I'm, I'm red-green, but that if I woke up in that room, I would never go back to if sleep. If Iowa I, I State have, goes to the Cheez-It Bowl, they're going to fit right I in. I have there. a hard enough time as it is. That's it's like neon yellow. Like, is there such a thing? You can't sleep in that room. I'm not a big fan of Cheez Its either. I don't think I'd, I don't think that'd be a good thing for me. <laughs> Coming up, men's basketball. Is this young group starting to figure things out? We had some insight from Greg Rubel just a few moments ago. We'll dive a little deeper as they hit the long ball. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics.
Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. I was four years old when I left Zambia. My dad was born in Shila in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation live here in Studio B. Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler. Uh, let's talk more about Mark Pope and his basketball team. We have a unique opportunity. We get to know the guys a little better because we're around them. We get to strategize with the coach and the coaching staff as we prep for broadcasts and wrap those up. We're going to be back on the call tomorrow afternoon. Again, South Dakota at Vivint Arena. Um, what's your take on these guys? I, I, li I like this young, young talent. Um, I, I'm particularly fond of Waterman. Because yeah. he's from right by right. where I grew up. I just saw, as I was and when walk he walks by, Blaine shouts upstate to him. Well, this, so, so this morning I, call, I just go, hey, upstate. And he always, he always uh, comes over and gives me a hug. But I just saw him this morning when I was walking into the studio, and it's a little blustery and snowy. And I said, hey, what's up, upstate? And he came over and he gave, gave me a, a hug. And then he says, uh, man, this weather's nothing compared to what we grew up in. Because yeah, he true. knows if you're in upstate New York at the Finger Lakes <laughs> or just, he grew up just south of Lake Ontario. So he grew up where they get smacked with snow. This is nothing for him. We just got a little bit. Salt yeah. Lake in that area got so, a whole lot more. He, but. He, and here, here's what I like about this team so far. I My expectations were set perfectly because we met with Mark Pope. You and I went to lunch with Mark and, and talked all about the new faces that were coming in and what we should expect from this team. And he said to us, I'm just telling you guys right now, we're running a brand new system. Turnovers are going to be a problem early. They're going to figure it out. I got a bunch of new faces, so they're not going to understand where their shots come. Even my faces that are coming back um, don't know because it's a new system. And so they're going to be hesitant. We're not going to shoot the ball great. But we're going to pressure D. These guys are going to play with effort. The turnovers are going to come down, and we're going to start to shoot the ball better. And by the time we get into WCC play, I think we're going to like what we're going to put out on the floor. Now, when we had lunch, they hadn't played a game yet. Not one game, and he said that all of those things. And we've seen all of it happen. Yes. Uh, and, and especially in the last few days, and, and, and Westminster is Westminster, but let's focus on what they did in the second half against Dayton uh, and what they showed signs of against Butler uh, and, and even in the later stage against USC. But uh, turnovers are coming down, and turnovers yes. for this team are everything, especially when you can't, when you can't throw it into a seven-footer. Yeah, and... and Early on, 20-plus turnovers were the norm, and we, we were looking at each other going, whoa, this is Idaho State. This is like how you turn in the ball over 23 times against Idaho State, right? And then San Diego State, you're going, okay, 20, San Diego State, this is a on really, really good team. But, man, 20 is not a good number. And remember the other night when we went into the game, you asked me on the air, like, what's your goal for this team on turnovers? I said, I want to see this team be consistently 12 and under. And, and you, you see this trend as they go from 23 to 20, th 13 at Missouri State, but back up to 21 against Nichols, 17, 13, 11, 10. These, these last four games, I feel like they've, they've done a much better job. And the indication, if you look at the assist line over there against Westminster and the 18 against Dayton, a lot of those coming in the second half, the guys are starting to understand when they're supposed to give the ball up, where to find a player with an open shot, how to take care of one another um, and, and be great teammates. Lots When they were on that three-point barrage in the first half the other night against Westminster or on the three-point shooting barrage at the second half of that Dayton game, almost every one of those shots were assisted where the ball's either going inside and coming back out to a shooter ready to go or going inside and then out and then a great swing pass around to wide open shooters. I, everything that Mark told us we should expect, we saw early. 
and the progress that he said he hoped they would have by the WCC were seeing. So I, I'm feeling very good about this team because I like it when the coach calls exactly what's going to yeah. happen and it comes to pass. We're watching uh, some of the threes right there. And one thing we've learned with Waterman and with Robinson, uh, when they get like just a little bit more time, fraction of a second more, uh, they don't miss. When they rushed it a little bit like they did early in the season, uh, especially for Robinson, we watch him come out after every single game, after everyone left, and shoot some more three-pointers because he's so ticked off. He's like, I am such a better shooter than this. I think it, for a moment there was like 6 of 35 or something crazy. Yeah. Um, and the last four games, he's up over 50% shooting threes. And, um, and, and again, it's, it's almost like well, Saturday when we watch this game. If he's got just that fraction of a second to set himself, it's going in. Yeah, and when you watch Jackson Robinson shot, even early on, we're going, how's that not going in? That's such a smooth, beautiful release. Like fundamentally, everything's perfect about it. Same, same, you know, same thing with Waterman. Right. Same, same thing with Dallin Hall. Um, I think Jackson Robinson, in particular, though, um, you, you take a look at these numbers over the over the beginning of that season, 28.9 percent, and now you look at what he's done in those last two games. He's a confident player. There's two things that cause you to miss shots, and it all has to do with rhythm. Um, when you're a good shooter, when fundamentally everything's right, when you're missing shots, you're either rushing it, so you're not your fundamentals aren't perfect, you're hurrying it a little bit too much, or you're hesitating, so you're taking too long and you're not shooting it in rhythm. We saw a little bit of both out of Jackson Robinson in the first six games. These last two games, it's like he took a bunch of shots after practice and for practice, he finally just went like this. <sighs> okay, these these teammates have confidence in me. This coach wants me to shoot these. I need to relax and shoot it. And once that happened, watch out. Like, he is knocking them down at a crazy rate. We've never heard Pope, and sometimes we're close to him uh, in the games, we've never heard him yell at a player and say, bad shot, or don't shoot that shot. It's always been, calm down, take your time, shoot your shot. And that's got to be, you know, for, for a guy like Robinson who uh, went to Texas A&M and then over to Arkansas now to BYU. Highly touted kid coming out of high school. BYU wouldn't get this kid coming out of high school. But on the road that he's been on and, and seeking opportunity to play and develop his skills, BYU might be the most perfect place for him because he's got a coach that says, shoot it. Just just shoot it under control. If, if a coach gives you the green light, and the other thing you got to have is you got to feel like you're your teammates are rooting for. When you're missing, if you don't feel like your teammates are going, no, we know you can make, make this shot. You're making it in practice. You, you need to keep shooting it. When you get that feeling from the coaching staff and your teammates, that's when you keep shooting and you shoot out of it. So culture, again, this year for BYU's basketball team is good. And you can tell by these guys kind of shooting their way out of this thing and, and playing really well right Waterman's now. Waterman's come into the starting lineup when Spencer Johnson went out. Uh, will he be back before Christmas? Will he be back before league play? That's kind of still Sp Spencer said he was going to play Saturday. Yeah, yeah that's not And Mark right. Pope told us <laughs> his injuries are a little more serious than that. Like yeah, we're going to We're, we're going to get up. him back. Um, but and, and I love that Spencer says that. I love that he wants to get out there and he's dying to be back out there. But yeah. they, they'll, he's probably out another couple of games. But it gives Waterman an opportunity to come in and and all of a sudden feel the the weight of being announced in the starting five uh, and going out there with expectation, and yet he's hitting over 50% of his shots. This was a nice step back. A defender crashed into another one, went down, then he then he stuck it. But then again, as we've seen with Waterman, when he is when he's on time and on his shot, rarely does he miss. Well, and what's nice about him is if you he's such a matchup problem. If you put a small guy on him, he'll do what we just saw him do right there. He's gonna post up at 6'11", and shoot it right over the top of you. So, if, if in, and that's because you're trying to chase him out to the perimeter. Then you go, well, we better put a bigger defender on him. Then he's just going to go out and shoot right. You take him out to the perimeter. He's got quickness. He can handle the ball. He's a matchup nightmare, and I, I love where his career is going to go. It's going to be fun. So, well, it's fun stuff, and I think this team's on the right track. I really do. I love that Mark Pope called it before the season. That makes it even better. And we're going to hold him to it, too. So, hey, join us tomorrow. For that men's basketball game, BYU takes on South Dakota at Vivint Arena in Salt Lake City. Uh, the pregame live starts at 2.30 Eastern with tip-off at 3.30 on BYU TV. Radio coverage is on BYU Radio. Rudy Williams told us uh, he just loves it up there, loves the space of the NBA arena, and he doesn't seem to be bothered by that three-point NBA line compared to the college one. Up next, a worthy rise and shout to the only former Cougar with a green jacket. This is BYU Sports Nation.
BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Lauren Daigle here. It's John Legend here. Hi, everybody. It's Kristen Chenoweth. Kelly O'Hara here. Merry Christmas from all of us at BYU TV. Merry Christmas from everyone at BYU TV. Happy holidays from everyone at BYU TV. Merry Christmas from all of us here at BYU TV. Merry Christmas from all of us at, at BYU, BYU TV. TV. Happy holidays from everyone at BYU TV. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps or listen to the podcast. But remember, subscribe, rate, and review. And uh, Yeah, especially today. Review the show today. BYU, all of the, these sports entities are so accessible. Just, just find us wherever wherever you go for your social media. Our question of the day, if you could guarantee a 7-5 and five record for BYU in their first year of the Big 12, would you take it? Our elite voice of the day is presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Dan Snow on Facebook. Let's see the first full schedule first, and even then, probably not. One of the fun things with sports is anticipating the next season being the big one. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. How about Mike Weir? Absolutely. International President's Captain for the 2024 President's Club. Our guest today, Greg Rubel. Greg, thanks for coming in. Hey, the conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This and all of our shows are on demand on BYUSN.com. For Blaine, I'm Dave. Shout out to Keith Rice. See you tomorrow for BYU South Dakota. Go Cougs.